All right. Um, Hassan Butcher, can I have your um, first and last name and the uh, spelling, please, for records? Lewis A. Butcher, Jr., L-O-U-I-S, middle initial A, B-U-T-C-H-E-R, Jr., J-R. All right. And um, uh, can I have your uh, title or position um, within the community? I'm retired pastor of the Brightside Baptist Church here in Lancaster, and my title is uh, Reverend Dr. Lewis A. Butcher. Okay, and um, first first question. Um, Am um, I looking this way? Uh, right at me. Yep. Uh, okay. Yep. You're just fine right there. Um, uh, so um, first question, um, what are some of your earliest uh, experiences or memories uh, with the the river or the creek, as uh, as 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 it was called. Yes, thank you. I grew up in Lancaster in the Seventh Ward in the uh, early part of 1940 and into 1950, and the Conestoga, which is now called a river, was called the Conestoga Creek. Um, my personal experiences were mostly at Rocky Springs. Um, the creek ran by the amusement park and down by the uh, river there was, there was one uh, attraction which, were, um, which was speedboats. And you could actually get on a speedboat. There was a little driver there and um, they would take you on a speedboat ride up to a certain point and then turn around and bring you back to the little dock there. And so that was one of my early experiences with the Conestoga River. And then um, there were times where we would walk, walk along the river when we were in the um, Williamson or Central Park. And of course, some of the kids swam there. I did not, but... Uh, we can talk about that. <laughs> um, so there, uh, uh, there, there's been uh, um, a, a lot of people that said, you, you know, um, I wasn't allowed to swim down there. I wasn't allowed to swim down there. Were Were you one of the people uh, uh, as well? One of the uh, kids growing up as well that uh, was not allowed to uh, swim down there. Yeah, that's right. Um, it was called the po that portion of the river was called the Pogi, which I. I'm told derived its name from the fact that it ran by uh, what is now Conestoga View, but back in the day it was just called the County Poorhouse. And um, uh, the river ran by there and it was called the Pogi. Now, in the established pools around Lancaster at Rocky Springs Park, there was a pool. Uh, Maple Grove had a pool. Later on, there was a pool called Brookside and African-American young people were not permitted to swim there. And so the alternative was to swim in the pogi. But there was no supervision, and at times um, it was very dangerous to swim there. And one young man, his nickname was Squirrel, his first name was James, I can't recall his, his last name, but he actually drowned there in the pogi behind the uh, Lancaster County Poorhouse. Mm. So then, um, uh, after that um, uh, drowning, were uh, parents more vigilant uh, uh, and, and more um, and more intentional about um, you all not going down there? I think so, but that didn't stop you know the kids from going because there really wasn't any place else other than the waterworks, which um, actually where they swam then is kind of out of commission now. It's over where. Um, the uh, route, the entrance to Route 30 bypass is located. And so there was no other place to swim beside um, the Conestoga Creek or uh, the waterworks. And in the summer when it was very, very hot, um, you know, I guess the parents were lenient because there was no other place to swim. Now later on in the late 50s and early 60s, there were little wading pools put into the various playgrounds but they were very shallow, and the most you could do was sit in there and cool off, but there was no way to really swim there. 
And um and you you personally, um, why did you personally choose not to swim uh, down there? Well, it was my parents. Mm -hmm. They um, they would not allow me or my family, my my siblings to uh, to go swim in the pogi. Because it was, you know, when it would rain, it was the r river would swell. It was dangerous, and um, many of the parents, because it was unsupervised, uh, would not let their kids go there. On the other hand, I'm not faulting the parents that did, because most of the kids that swam in the pogi were good swimmers. And um, as I'm saying, there were, the alternatives really didn't exist. The indoor pools, uh, there, were the, there was the YM and the YW, but many of the kids in the seventh ward were not members. And, uh, you know, during the summer, there was really no other place to go. And um, um, concentrating on, on the summer, uh, uh, through these interviews, uh, we, we've interviewed um, uh, folks that, that were a part of uh, Camp Hogan or, or a part of uh, Camp, Camp Snyder. Uh, which one did you attend? I didn't go to any summer camps. Um, I was a member of the Boys Club, but I never went to their camp. And at some point, I was a member of the Y, but never went to their camps. Uh, usually in the summer, uh, we would play at the Rockland Street Playground. They used to call it Jesse's Playground because the caretaker's name was, was Jesse. And then um, as I got older, I had a job during the summer. I, was, I uh, delivered newspapers, and then eventually I worked on a farm. So um, I really didn't have the camp experience down at the Boys Club camp or the Wise camp. Uh, there were times when, as a Cub Scout or a Boy Scout, we would go out uh, on short camping trips, but, but that was about it. Uh, and um, and so was the um, Boys Club and Girls Club and the Y, um, uh, as a youth, was that your uh, first introduction um, to, to, um, to the outdoors, to the environment, or did you already uh, Fre fre frequent the outdoors with family. Well, yeah. Well, my father was a pastor, and his church was in the county up in Kenoy Township, and so it was it was an outdoor environment, and there was a, a real campus around the church, as well as it was a quarry town, and it was there were places there where you could play outside, and um, actually. Um, his church was only about 50 or 60 yards from the Susquehanna River. But we would go in the evenings um, when my parents got off work, particularly my mother, we would go out to Williamson Park and there we would run or uh, play uh, softball or, you know, other team sports. The other places we would go, um, there was, there's now a park that's located in the city at uh, Dauphin and Christian Street. And that was an open field. It's now a playground dedicated to the late Joe Jackson, who was the first um, person in the Seventh Ward to, to perish uh, in the uh, Vietnam War. He was Sergeant Joe Jackson, he was a Marine. But we, it was an open field and all the kids used to gather there and, and uh, play softball. And then, as I said, we would go to the Rockland Street Playground and play basketball. And there were swings there and a sliding board and a jungle gym. So there are plenty outdoor spaces, but uh, we just didn't have the camping experience. All right. Um, so um, uh, experiences at, at the county pool. When the uh, uh, county pool finally opened, um, did you frequent it? Never swam at the county pool ever. <laughs> just never, <laughs> just never went there. By the time it opened, I was, I was, um, I was an adult, and um, probably in college. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I had a full time job, and then eventually moved out of, moved out of Lancaster. All right. So, um, so 
Um, um, last week when we um, spoke over the phone, um, you you did say that you didn't frequent the river, but uh, there were there were some some um, some other folks, some some older folks um, uh, that that frequent in the river. Um, you um, said some names. Can you uh, uh, take us down memory lane uh, real quick and uh, let us know who were the people that would uh, frequent? Really, I can't say definitively. There were young men that were older than I was. Mm -hmm. And um, I know that a number of them would swim at the park. I mean, at the, uh, at the pogey. Um, but right now, I can't re actually recall names of those who were there. Um, most of them are now deceased, um, but it was, a, it was a gathering place, and, um, you know, the, the, there are people in Lancaster probably now who remember uh, those that swam there. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we, um, we, we interviewed um, Mr. Nelson Polite uh, Jr., and, mm -hmm. um, and, and he said that uh, he, him and his father would go down there and go fishing. Um, mm -hmm. uh, did you do any, any uh, fishing in the creek or, or, or anything like that? No, I guess, I guess I'm not a good storyteller here because <laughs> the only, I only fished once, and that was at Long's Park, and it was a special program for, for, for young people, and my parents bought me a very inexpensive um, uh, gear. It was, it was uh, you know, a fishing pole with a little line on it. I caught one fish. And that was it. But I never fished down. And I, I wasn't a fisherman. And my, my father was not. And even though his church was at the Susquehanna uh, River, interestingly, we never, we never fished. Uh, and um, and uh, let's, uh, let's bring in um, current a, a little bit. Um, uh, what are your current, um, current thoughts on the uh, state of the Conestoga today? Yeah, I, you know, the Conestoga is interesting. It's, it's had a history. Um, I was in the National Guard in 1972 when Hurricane Agnes came and um, the, the river overflowed its banks. And actually there, there, were, there was at least one person who drowned as a result of that. Um, the, there, were, there was flooding um, in some of the uh, developments. Um, today, I really would love to see the, the Conestoga, especially down around the Central Park area, to become uh, a marina. I would like to see it be developed into a recreational spot uh, there behind the houses that uh, the Saka has built uh, off of Chesapeake Street. I think it could be commercialized and and be a hub for for recreation and um, uh, something maybe not to the scale, but something similar to the Inner Harbor in Baltimore. Um, I think there could actually be it may have to be dredged so that it could be lower low enough, but but things like duck boats and so forth could be there where people could go and relax. Because as kids, um, the Central Park and Williamson Park were places that we went. Um, it was inexpensive, and uh, we were really able to relax there as families. And here, I think the Conestoga could offer those same kind of benefits. God, that is interesting. That is interesting. I love that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, um, so then you would, um, you would. Uh, um, open up the r river uh, as, a, as a tourist attraction then, basically. Yeah, parts of it, yes. Oh. Parts of it, yes. And, and um, you know, even, even reprise some of the things that happened at Rocky Springs, like, um, you know, the little, the little boats, the little speed boats. Um, I think a lot could be done to make it very recreational for folks. And it could be a venue that wouldn't necessarily be that expensive. Has to be some initial uh, investment, but I think it would be a, a place where people could congregate and tie in very easily to the Central Park, which is already there. And um, um, talking talking about Rocky Springs, um, what what has been 
um, your your experience growing up with Rocky Springs because I uh, we've heard uh, uh, many different stories. Um, there's a there's a underlining theme uh, uh, that connects the stories. Uh, but for yourself, um, um, experiences with um, Rocky Springs and the segregation. Well, <clears throat> as youth, as kids, we used to go to Rocky Springs, um, and then every year. But we were, we were not allowed to swim in the pool. And it, it was almost understood that you would go to Rocky Springs for the attractions, for the rides, but you'd never try to go into the pool. Each Once a year, Luke and Steele hosted uh, what was called the Coatesville Picnic. And many, many African Americans from all around, Harrisburg, York, Lancaster, and certainly Coatesville, would come to the park uh, for the day, and um, every year, coincidentally, the pool was closed for maintenance. Um, that was the official line, but we always knew what the situation was. And so black people were not allowed to swim in that pool. When I was a uh, newspaper carrier, um, the Lancaster newspapers would hold their annual news carrier picnic at Rocky Springs at a time different from the Coatesville picnic. And the one year I went, um, my manager came and said, Lewis, if you don't try to go into the swimming pool, we'll give you extra tickets for the amusements and the rides. And my mother said, absolutely not. If he can't go in the pool like everybody else, then you know he, he's gonna leave the picnic, and I did. Um, so everybody really knew what the situation was. It was not only there, but it was at Maple Grove. And eventually Maple Grove was made a private pool just to be able to keep black people out. So then, um, so, so then um, uh, growing, growing up um, uh, with, with those exp experiences then, uh, uh, what did you all do as, as alternatives for, for leisure then? Well, we went to Rocky Springs, and we went to Hershey, and we went to Williams Grove, um, which was is now no longer in existence. Um, and we went to the to the Central Park and Williamson Park, and they had you know swings and and uh, pavilions and and ball fields. So we did that, and then we had the playgrounds in the city. But as far as swimming was concerned, again, if you didn't swim. Um, at the Waterworks or the Pogi, or at the YM or YW, swimming was pretty well out. Now later on, I think under Mayor Morris, um, they opened uh, Conestoga Pines, which is off of Pitney Road, um, as an alternative. And then later, because of the protests, the, the, the county commissioners uh, opened the Lancaster County uh, pool. But in the early years, you know, you just there was really no other place to go. So then, um, um, where where the um, current uh, river stands stands today, um, and and the um, current administration, um, Mayor Sirachi, and and our current city council, do you think that uh, there's anything that that uh, they could do or should do um, to to address the river? I, I don't know the, the status of the river. Um, again, I, I think that um, probably if it's not stocked, it should be stocked so that people can do recreational fishing. Um, and again, I would love to see it developed into something where, where people could use it as a recreational place and uh, which would draw people in and become economic, economically viable. Right. Um, uh, and um, uh, any um, any any lasting uh, lasting thoughts, um, uh, whether whether it's um, with with how the river was handled in the past, um, uh, any lasting thoughts on like tourism, like you on uh, um, brought up any uh, any lasting existing thoughts that we did not discuss uh, that you feel, feel as though should be highlighted uh, pertaining to the river. No, I think it's a real asset, and um, 
Uh, hopefully it's, it's environmentally sound and it's being kept clean and um, it's got memories for all of us in various capacities, especially the older generation like myself. And so I'm, I'm very fond of the old Conestoga Creek, which they told me later was really a river. All right. Um, and is there anything that I missed? Um, is, is there uh, something that you uh, want to add? No, I think you covered it well. It's the Conestoga River, Conestoga Creek. And uh, my hope is that the current generations and those that will come will find some connection to the river. Um, it gets angry when there's a lot of rainfall, and so it's a place that has to be has to be uh, approached cautiously, like at Bridgeport and, and some other places. But by and large, it's an it's a asset to Lancaster City and County, and I'm glad for the Conestoga Creek. All right, that is everything. Um, all right, that was about 22 minutes, so that'll, that'll work. Good. All right, let me... Um, I'm sure you'll be editing it down.